this video is a third in a series of videos I have made about making color graphs on screen printing mesh plate. And this video is about my second plate, which I used to make this print. I'm going to talk you through the whole process and show you a very exciting technique of developing a color graph on top of a screen printing mesh. If you would like to see how to create this screen printing mesh color graph plate, please um, follow the link to go to video number one. If you would like to see my first color graph print made out of the screen printing mesh, please follow this link to see video number two. Um, hope you enjoy this. So let's get cracking. So first of all, I've uh, used Photoshop to create an image with a background of my color graph. And what I was looking for is creating a sort of landscape using a photograph I took in Manchester while visiting and it has uh, a real significance for me at the moment because my son's going to university, he'll be leaving home and I feel sad about it but it's a very joyful time for him and also because I went to Manchester University um, it has some great memories. So I was on a tram and I took this photo of this sort of urban landscape, a bridge and um, it was really fun um, and I really wanted to depict that picture because it's meaningful to me at the moment. So by uh, using some masking and uh, my photograph I sort of took um, an outline of some of the shapes I liked and um, played about with some ideas and colours and uh, what I was hoping I was going to reproduce that in my silk color graph um, so it was a, like a general idea and um, it was good to do it on 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 the photoshop first uh, so that I could start with a with, with a with a plan um, and some kind of idea of what I wanted to do so um, I'm here starting out with masking tape I'm not using because the, the, the shapes are very straight not like in the in the first silk color graph um, I am uh, building the shapes that I don't um, that I want to mask out and leaving exposed the areas that I'm going to use acrylic medium on and the areas that are going to be lighter, almost white. So I'm going to um, experiment first of all by starting off um, with some matte and gloss medium and build layers um, as silk the, the screen print um, mesh sort of absorbs um, medium quite well so you can create layers and really build up your values um, so I'm just um, masking out the areas that I want to remain dark or remain um, showing through the silk screen um, design and um, it um, it's probably more tricky to use tape than use sort of sticky film frisket film or other uh, ways of masking out um, because masking tape can be a bit annoying with peeling off uh, but in this circumstance, it's, it's just easier to do it to do it using masking tape. Um, so I've gone ahead to do that, um, and it's, it seems to be sticking to my color graph okay. Uh, I have inked it up before, so I was a bit nervous if it was going to stick. It might have traces of ink that might be make it difficult to stick to the plate, but. Um, it it's it was okay. There were in ver there were various places where it was a little bit difficult to stick, but all in all, it was actually okay. So I've got some uh, newspaper down, and here is the first layer is going to be just uh, matte medium, and I'm applying this matte medium with a brush, and I'm sort of. Um, being careful not to disturb the tape because I don't want the matte medium to go underneath the plate. And I'm smoothing it out with uh, 
uh, like a color shaping tool um, just to make the area as smooth as possible. Um, it won't be perfect because it will have some marks uh, but um, it's just my first layer and I'm just building the layers up and just seeing what happens. So after it's dried I'm masking those places out where I want the matte medium to remain um, and then I'm building my second layer here and this is going to be gloss medium. Gloss medium will be paler so the matte medium areas that I've just masked out will be a little bit darker in value and the gloss medium will be a lot paler. So here again I'm just doing the same with the brush and then smoothing it out with a um, like a color shaping tool, shaping tool. Um, you can use anything, you can use an old credit card. Or... So here I'm just drying out with um, hair dryer. Hair dryer is quite useful with medium. What I found though here is after drying, I thought it would be better to dry first. So, but what I've realized is that unfortunately, once you dry it, it can be quite difficult uh, to peel the tape off as the tape peels off the me little bit of medium. So you can see I I'm using a scalpel knife here to just um, make it easier um, to peel the tape off. So I don't peel the gloss medium with it which has now dried and become sort of a little bit um, uh, stretchy and gooey um, so yeah one thing I would say um, it's not a good idea to dry it first and as you will see when I apply next layer I actually um, don't wait for it to dry and peel off straight away actually that's a lot better um, it was a much easier way to do it um, so yeah, you live and learn, you make mistakes. But it was still okay. In in some places, I, I guess I got a bit of a rough edge, but it wasn't too bad. Um, I ended up going over, as you will see from my print, um, it was um, quite rough. The, the gloss medium actually was absorbed quite quite a bit by the screen printing mesh or surprisingly actually I thought it was going to be wipe off very it was going to wipe off very clean but you will see that it doesn't uh, it needed another layer um, so yeah as you can see I'm really struggling here with getting that tape off um, especially those those really thin bits here it was quite tricky it's it's very difficult to see what I'm doing because it dries so clear. You can't even see any of the work that I've done. Uh, but you will be able to see it once I print it. And it's... Um, so it feels really like you're working totally blind. Um, Sorry, I don't have an answer for that. Apologies for my Alexa waking up. <laughs> typical. Um, so here I am uh, rolling out uh, my ink. Normally in all my previous videos I have applied ink using uh, just a piece of mounting board or a card but because this is so delicate I am going to roll it out with a roller and then with the scrim I will sort of with round motion motions I will push the ink in when I'm actually um, wiping the ink off um, and um, this is a method that Akua normally presents in their demo videos they actually present uh, inking up with a roller um, so I, I think that's a really good way to save ink you probably put way too much ink on using um, a card uh, to apply ink so this is actually a really good method I think with rolling it um, onto the plate and it's just a little bit gentler on the plate especially when you have some fine detail um, so I always polish my plate at the end because I think it just gives it that extra um, crispness and finer detail here I'm putting the plate down on um, the press uh, I have wetted the paper soaked the paper up and blotted it and um, 
putting it through the press. And this is obviously the most exciting part of the whole process, um, just seeing the result. I do really love that colour. It's gorgeous. So yeah, here we go. It's, it's a really interesting result. And although this is a proof and I'm not going to use it, I will probably do something on top of it. So the result is quite interesting. Um, however, uh, as you, I don't know if you remember, uh, I put matte medium here and gloss medium here. The matte medium in this part seems very, well, hardly any difference between matte medium and the actual plate. So that didn't make any difference here. But here, against a darker background, it made um, a more significant difference. Um, so I feel as if, uh, quite like this, this was matte medium and this was gloss medium and there was no medium here. Um, I feel like perhaps it needs another coat, but I can't quite decide because I do quite like the textures that I have. So if I go over another uh, gloss medium and another matte medium layer, I might lose some of that texture so ooh, it's really difficult to decide I'm gonna have to think about it okay the decision has been made so uh, first of all I'm doing a bit of a touch-up because I didn't like that bit there that sort of dark bit showing through so I'm just touching up with a little bit of acrylic there and I am masking out all the bits so I have decided to use clear tar gel not even a gloss medium but actual clear tar gel because it's sort of more thick syrupy like texture and very easy to apply and as you can see I'm not waiting for it to dry I'm just peeling the tape off because it's much easier it stays it's 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 not very it's not as fluid as gloss medium the clear tar gel and I think it will show a very light tone almost white probably it will really uh, wipe the, the the ink off clean um it's um quite easy to apply and the color shape at all is um it's smoothing it out quite nicely so um yeah i think that should work quite well so as you can see the clear tar gel is a little bit different from the gloss medium. It's um, a little bit thicker and it creates a thicker layer than the gloss medium. So this is where the gloss medium was and this is where the clear tar gel is. Um, so it should provide a little bit more consistency in the white, in the light value. Um, and also I've got problems here of peeling off, the, the, the gloss medium is peeling off. So what I did is by not waiting for it to dry before I peeled off the tape, I um, avoided the, the, the sort of pull off marks that I got. Um, so yeah, that was another discovery. Um, but yeah, this is looking quite good. But you never know. We'll find out when it's printed. All right, time to do the second print. And I'm very excited about this. Um, so again, we're just rolling on the um, ink. And I was not very sort of uh, thorough with cleaning my plate in between inking up. I just added the layers on. And it was actually okay. I probably should have cleaned it up a little bit more, but um, I just gave it a wipe with a baby wipe very gently and it took most of the ink off. Um, but yeah, media, the acrylic media didn't have any problem with sticking on. So here again, I'm just wiping with a scrim, which pushes a bit more ink in and also wipes off at the same time. And as always, polishing my plate at the end, a very important part. And yeah let's crack on with printing um this is my soaked but not wet paper 
and blankets down. And here we go. I am sorry, I did not point my camera in the right place. Um, terrible filming on my part, um, but I am going to show you my print. So as you can see, it is a lot lighter. So I c as you can see, a huge contrast between this print and the last print. So having this gloss um, media or coal tar gel, gel um, similar effect, um, really give, gives a, a glossy finish, which uh, you, the the, wink, the the ink just wipes off it really clean. And then we've got the stripe here of um, previous um, gloss medium. So you can really see the difference between even gloss and coal tar gel. Um, it's uh, the, the tar gel really wipes the ink off. Um, so yeah, this gives a bit more opportunity to play with some other colours and add perhaps uh, some dry point on top. Um, this I felt what just needed a little bit more um, contrast. Okay, so um, I am just adding my stencil now. It, it's um, I'm using the other side. I've still got ink on the other side. I'm just using the other side of my glass uh, just so I don't have to clean it yet. So sorry, it doesn't really show very well uh, this magenta colour I'm using here. Uh, but you will see it when I want it. So this is my brand new stencil that I made. And you can see how I make stencils in my video. Called Stencils for, for Colographs. Um, with a link here. It's on my uh, Colograph printing channel. Um, so I'm just um, rolling out my magenta ink. Uh, and I'm going to roll it onto my stencil. This stencil, by the way, took me ages to cut out. Um, I don't have a die cutting machine, um, but I'm hoping to get one. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it took, uh, with a little scalpel knife forever, but hopefully I can use it a few times. I do really love that pattern. Uh, it was inspired by a rock formation in Portugal. I took a photo of, um, so, um, as here you can see, I'm not rolling it out on the entire stencil but I actually went back and rolled it rolled the ink on the entire stencil because I've realized that I can't really put it on my press going across because it wouldn't fit onto my press um so um I'm just using here it's going to be a monoprint on top of my print I'm just using an intaglio ink it's absolutely fine I don't have a special relief ink for this job um it's um it, it does what it what it needs me to do, uh, so it's absolutely fine. Um, I'm just doing it with a sort of soft roller. Um, so um, it, it works, it works fine. So um, here I'm just going to mark, uh, just stencil out some areas I want covered. Um, that I don't want this uh, magenta colour to go on top of because I don't want this stencil to cover the entire area of my print. So uh, just with a little bit of newsprint, I'm cutting out here. I'm just going to block out these areas, which is one big area in the middle really. Um, now the stencil is smaller than my print but it's okay because I actually don't want the entire print. I've decided that um, I'm going to make it actually a bit smaller, sort of the size of the stencil. Um, yeah, so here we go. I'm just putting it through the press um, and voila. Here is my print. So it's a bit different printing it with a stencil because I'm just putting the stencil on top. You could flip it over, but I don't see any advantage of that. Um, for me anyway, it's it still works. 
without flipping it over. So yes, I've got a, a sort of second colour. I could do a little bit more with it. Um, I have to think about it really. Um, I could add a bit of collage to it, I guess. I could, um, but I think at the moment the way I feel is it's okay the way it is. Um, not overly keen on doing too much to it. Um, so um, yeah, but I might go, I might go back to it at some point and do more. Anyway, I, I really hope you've enjoyed this. And if you like my videos, like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And yeah, um, let me know if there is another exciting technique you like um, um, doing. Or is there anything you'd like me to film or show you? Uh, anything to do with intaglio, colograph printing or monoprinting? Um, your suggestions are always welcome. And thank you so much for watching. Um, see you at the next video. Thank you.